but maybe everybody's here. John is on by Zoom today. The pleasure to fly flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and it is well with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, next item up is to approve the meeting agenda. There are two, two items underneath acknowledgments that were added um, since the third packet went off. Um, varsity volleyball and policy academics are the last two items. Um, can I get a motion to approve the meeting agenda? I'll, for, or I'll move to approve the meeting agenda as presented. Mm-hmm. Motion by Gray. Is there a second? I'll second. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? All right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye by roll call. John's on Zoom here. Amal? Okay. Aye. John? Aye. Is that aye? Greg? Aye. Stacy? Aye. All right. All those in favor. Motion carries. Opportunities for visitors to address the board. Is there anybody that would like to address the board? Anybody? And acknowledgements. Uh, school board candidates, fall advisors, coaches, athletes, and participants, all state fall student athletes, and boys soccer, all state uh, city Vera. Boys Cross Country All Section All State All State Academic Charlie Larson. Uh, Boys Cross Country All Section All State Academic. <coughs> Boys Cross Country Team All State Academic Gold Award. And Girls Cross Country Team All State Academic Gold Award. The Varsity Volleyball Team All State Academic Gold Award. And All State Academic Awards Grace Backstrom, Hazel Hogroot, and Anna Grissom. Mr. Cork, do you have anything to add? I just want to thank our our school board candidates. I want to thank our fall advisors, coaches, our athletes, and our participants <coughs> for all their time and their effort. And I want to congratulate all the student athletes for their recognition statewide, individually and as a team. And up next we have a presentation. We have the Achievement and Integration Card report from Mrs. Wampler and Mr. Bergman. So this is the Achievement Integration Progress Report um, for 23-24. So this is an annual report that's due to the state every year in mid-December. So the first page will just cover uh, a little bit about Achievement Integration. This is a three-year plan. 23-24 was our first year of this next three-year plan that we're in. And it's really designed to be kind of rewritten as you go and revised so that you keep um, improving the things that you're doing to meet your goals. There's three types of goals for achievement and integration. It works around closing achievement gaps, equitable access to effective and diverse teachers, and that can be in the area of race, ethnicity, specialized certificates and degrees, and racial and economic integration. So the next page, uh, the A and I goal one, aligns with the district goal of the MCA reading and math proficiency rates for free and reduced students increasing by three percent a year. So our target was forty-one point eight percent. Our actual was thirty-four point two, and statewide was thirty-two point eight. The next page has math. Again, this was increasing those rates by 3% a year. So our target was 37.3, actual 29.8, and statewide 26.3. The next page covers some of the strategies that are in place to meet those goals. So one is core literacy support for students. That um, revolves around, there's a couple of teachers at each of the schools that are working with reading. There's different programs. We have different curriculum. 
and um, if the two principals want to just kind of talk a little bit about their new curriculum and the things that are happening with that. Do you want to talk, do you want to start, Mr. Nelson, maybe with your letters training, Bridges Math? Same thing I've been talking about every meeting, so nothing new. And are both implemented already? Both are, I know there's been training, but. There's training for letters. And anything you'd like yeah, to add? High school, so the OL and LA training is what our teachers that are required for the Read Act are doing. So the elementary is doing letters for their elementary staff, and um, our set of teachers um, opted for the OL and LA training. They had their first Zoom meeting. Um, so for this, again, the target was those math and reading proficiency scores. Um, increasing in this year, those goals were not met. Um, the next strategy is family engagement initiatives. And for Viking Elementary, that's just continuing with the scheduled conferences and family night events. The target for the attendance uh, conferences is 90% or more of parents. The actual was 93.4% average last year between fall and spring. And the two family night events there was an average of 62 people that attended. Anything you'd like to add on that, Mr. Nelson? Uh, no, we had 95% attendance at our conferences on Monday and uh, Title I Family Night is tomorrow, so first one for this year. Right, thank you. Uh, at the high school, one of the early interventions for students needing academic support includes uh, parents of at-risk students contacted to schedule appointments to discuss a student action plan. And Mrs. Lage also schedules meetings for at-risk juniors and seniors. So what we were looking for here is just to increase that subgroup of parents, those of the at-risk students, um, coming to conference attendance from 40% in 2022 to 45% in 2026. And last year the conference was it was 44 percent so that was met but we're also looking for just even involvement so some of these scheduled appointments going over to an action plan that's something else that we'll be able to measure too is is getting that that type of involvement anything you'd like to add on that um, so number one, the at-risk students, I really have to give kudos to Mrs. Lage on this one. A lot of this comes from our ABC meetings that we do um, each Monday. ABC, ABC is for um, attendance, behavior, and coursework. No, I'm sorry, attendance, behavior, coursework. Um, at the last meeting before conferences, we really sat down and figured out who are the kids that need to have parents come to conferences. Um, Mrs. Lage took the bull by the horns there, and she had eight out of ten show up, so I thought that was pretty darn good for parents that wouldn't typically um, come to conferences. Um, she also schedules meetings for at-risk juniors and seniors, but she schedules meetings for all seniors. Um, they need to do it before we go to winter break here, but. She's done just a great job of reaching out to students and making sure they're on track. Great. The next page is um, talking about the ANI Goal 3. This one is based around teacher equity. So the goal there is maintaining student access to more effective and diverse teachers by continuing to provide staff development in the areas of culture, race, ethnicity, and poverty for 100% of district teachers each year between 2023 and 2026. So a couple of strategies for this goal. Uh, one is educational career opportunities. So two of the courses that are offered here are intro to education and early childhood education. And that idea is kind of um, encouraging people within your district to pursue that, pursue educational opportunities. Um, and then staff development. We've had some really great stuff happening. Um, the, in 2023-24, um, we had the Seven Habits book study. Oh, do you guys want to talk about that, maybe? Or do you want me to go through that? Just some of the things oh, that... Sure. 
Yeah, last year we did the Seven Habits book study. Um, that was an option to all staff. Um, Lonnie, who is um, with Seven Habits, and Franklin Covey came and did a fall workshop with all teachers. Um, the Lighthouse team. Do um, you want to talk about Lighthouse? Mm -hmm. well, I don't know. Um, they've become pretty active again at the elementary. They meet pretty regularly with um, with Lonnie. At the high school, we pursued the Leader in Me, which is a little bit more of um, a little bit. It's like that next step up from. Well, they start with Leader in Me in the elementary, and then we work on the Seven Habits um, over here. John Creasel um, spoke last year, still standing, still smiling. This year we had Doc Brown come in. He spoke to our um, teachers and staff at fall workshops, and he just came this week to speak to students. And um, just a great, um, great message for both students and staff. Amberly Snyder was here last um, month to speak to students. She was the um, professional barrel greaser. Um, and then um, at our last fall workshop, at the, not fall, November workshop, um, Ivana Polovich came and spoke to our high school staff about some different ELL strategies. So that was a really good um, staff vote for, for our staff. I just want to expand on the strategies for number one. We haven't had our intro to ed class for a couple of years. Mr. Schaefer would like to have that to come back. He's been teaching college public speaking instead, and his schedule is so tight that we had more interest in college public speaking. But this year, we added the early childhood education course. And we have, I want to say there's eight or nine students in that class this year. So they can take over um, the full year. They will get six different classes that would give them an early childhood education certificate. So they could um, go right into some sort of career opportunity there. And we've had quite a few students opt to be student aides this year at the elementary. And so even at my own kids, Conference, I heard him talk about um, teacher Zayla or Zaley, and so it's just fun to hear them talk about the high school students getting experience with them, um, with teachers. Thank you. All right, and Mr. Brueggemann will come and talk about goal four. Just uh, piggybacking off of what uh, Laura said, one of the things as far as moving up to seven habits that we're really pushing um, as a program is to create um, portfolios that the students learn in junior high and then um, just highlight their greatness as they go through. And so we're starting with just uh, one or two grades this year and then as they move, hopefully, um, when you graduate, you have uh, kind of like a ready-made um, uh, resume basically showing what you've done. So, and then the other great thing about the BABC program is um, we start the meetings with the Jackson 5, ABC, one, two, three, and it's really a date right now. Also, um, if you did not get a chance to watch The Wizard of Oz, the play, um, it kind of is a, a good analogy for how Becky and I work. I am the face. She is the person behind the curtain. Um, does a lot, does a really good job with our a and uh, So my aspect of a and I is um, one of the things that we are assigned to do by the state is be um, the, the culture of our area because we are a very diverse um, school. And so there are a number of schools that are in our region that um, we reach out and try to make some kind of connection um, so that we interact with them and share our diversity. So um, different things, just uh, one of the things that I do with a, a small group of, um, right now it's all girls, I would like to add some um, guys to this is bring a group of kids over to Frazee, where we um, interact and help out a class over there once a month. Uh, going to the powwow and bringing our diverse group of people. Um, it's uh, over in Detroit Lakes, it's kind of, uh, it's fun to see, um, you know, all sorts of our culture um, taking part in the, the dance that they have going around the um, middle of the floor and stuff like that. Um, coming up in January, I will send out a message to uh, our students. If you're interested in um, doing a quick presentation on a quinceanera, 
Okay, let's put that together. If you're interested in doing a presentation on um, the foods that you eat, um, any aspect of our culture in our school, it's going to be open. And what we will do is bring in or invite schools from our region to come in, um, watch this presentation, have a little question and answer with um, the presenters, and then just kind of go through a, a quick little cultural kind of like fair type of a deal. So that's kind of my goal with a and is to make that actual connection with the surrounding schools. Thank you, Dave. Any questions? Are you done? Any questions? Any questions? Right. Um, moving on to administrative reports, we have Ms. Sarah Eric Mosley, and Mr. Principal. Enrollment K through 6, we're at 425. DPK is at 45. Reels 26 and Head Start is at 32. Um, we'd like to hire Craig Archambault as a paraprofessional. He'll be taking over for one of our pairs that moved to West Fargo. You know, like I said, we had a 95% attendance rate at conferences on Monday, which is awesome. Thanks to our families for making a priority for them to come in and talk to their teacher about their students. So. Uh, we had 267 students that had perfect attendance in October. Uh, again, a good number there. As we get into more of the cold and flu season, i um, like to see that number stay high, so good job. Today was a busy day. We had K through 3 collaboration, as well as an instructional leadership team meeting after school. Um, a lot of our teachers in both collaboration and their instructional leadership were talking about the letters. They've been through Unit 1 everything and already how they're changing their teaching. Some things that they're adapting, that they're learning to do different. Um, and they're like, ooh, we've been doing it this way. And uh, so it's been interesting to hear the conversation after only one unit already. So that's up to them to have a growth mindset of going in there with a positive attitude of learning and not taking this as a, this is just something we have to do. Uh, tomorrow night, I had one family game night from 6.15 to 7.15. And then uh, next Wednesday is our 4th through 6th collaboration. Elementary band concert has been changed to December 9th. And December 13th, if we get snow, will be ski trip to Andy's Tower Hills. And Mrs. Johnson sent out a reminder information at the end of the day today. So in the past, we've maybe had to postpone it. Hopefully we'll get a little bit of snow in December for this ski trip. So, any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Janet Besson, with high school principal. Our enrollment is at 376 for grades 7 through 12. Halloween was the end of quarter one. We had parent-teacher conferences on Monday from 1 to 7. Um, as Becky mentioned in her presentation, um, Mrs. Lage identified some at-risk students and scheduled some appointments with them. She also had meetings um, focusing on juniors and seniors with graduation visits. November 1st was a staff development day. In the morning, we had ELL training with Ivana Todorovich. She is an ELL teacher at East Coast Forks. Um, school district and just a great training for um, our teachers. We also had a staff meeting where we just um, recapped quarter one. This is our time to talk about what was good, um, maybe what needs to change a little bit, and for the most part it was a thumbs up report, so um, a good quarter for our teachers. And in the afternoon we had PLC and DLT meetings and work time for our teachers. Minnesota Honor Society host our, hosted a blood drive on Friday. It sounds like, for the most part, they were full um, in each slot, so we had great weather. It's very normal for that to be a bad weather day, so it was nice to have a good day for people to come in and donate blood. Uh, the Wizard of Oz, Miss Wang, had a great first performance um, with the Wizard of Oz. 
Um, I heard a great review from my own elementary students, and they said on Sunday, 60 of those kids came back to watch it again. So that's a pretty great turnout um, for Miss Wang and the cast. They did a great job. Just an update on the band trip. They are headed to New York again with proposed dates of March 23rd through the 30th. There are 40 students signed up and six chaperones. Veterans Day program, um, Friday was a busy day. We also had our Veterans Day program that day. Um, Miss, I won't say Miss Culture, Mrs. Poach and her staff did a great job with breakfast and then we had a short um, program afterwards with Mr. Fitzsimmons and Pet Band, Miss Wang and Chamber Choir um, adding in some vocals and music for us. Upcoming events, we had parent-teacher conferences. Um, tomorrow is the fall band concert at 7.30. Next Tuesday is our fall choir concert, also at 7.30. November 27th, we will play Turkey Bingo before we send students off for Thanksgiving. 28th and 29th is fall break, and then December 6th is mid-quarter already. A couple of fun things. We'll see if Eddie has the same things to say in his report. Um, Mr. Steves did some vehicle safety for our driver's ed class. Our fire ed classes took the Army fitness test. Chamber choir sang the Star Spangled Banner at many sporting events, and I heard many compliments, so it was nice to have um, live um, renditions of Star Spangled Banner at our fall events. Doc Brown is back, like I mentioned, to speak to our students last week. Fantastic Day was also in October to celebrate Down Syndrome Awareness Month. And then agenda items, I have approved the hire of Tina Jessen as paraprofessional. She will replace one of our pairs who is resigning in December. Questions for that school? Can we go back up to the um, numbers? Yes, student numbers. I just have a quick question, like eight seniors from the beginning of the year till now. Was, are any of those eight part of the 12 that went to Africa, or do we know so a lot of our, A lot of our senior class were ones that had attendance issues and chose um, they're not choosing to finish their senior year. So as much as I would like to say yes, the majority of them would be, would be no. I think a lot more from the elementary, the students from Africa. So can you say more about the attendance, attendance issues? Um, they're just students that have had truancy issues for multiple years and have chosen not to come back to school. So looking at the list, they're choosing online. So if you have chosen online, the uh, academy, Minnesota academy? Or I can get But we use, we lose their ADMs then. Yeah. Because I, I was just burnt out, so I was doing the numbers too, and like, so a total of 23 students. 23 students, yeah, but like the eight was really kind of. It's hard when they're senior. You've read that just, far, and now you know. Are we just did they move, or are they doing something else, or are they just dropping out? There's been a lot of conversations with Mr. Rubin, families, and it's just been tough kids to keep to keep in school. How about a fun question? What's turkey bingo? <laughs> it's bingo. Okay. The only caveat is that you need to, when you get your bingo, you um, gobble like a turkey uh, on your way down to the office. Yes. Gotcha. You can come play. Uh, you can play at the end of the day. I think I might say that day. <laughs> they actually did have somebody not win last year because they didn't gobble. <laughs> and the person behind them was gobbling. So. Um, that's fun. Any other questions? Okay. All right. So next is our student school board representative report. It looks like um, Mr. Sanchez is solo again. Yeah, as Ms. Jay said, um, chamber and band choir, um, they both played the anthem last Friday. And upcoming events, choir concert next week, Tuesday, band concert uh, this Thursday, grades 7 to 12. And Miss King's class is working on a reel, and it's like a, a video intro for winter sports, and they're just asking athletes that are in the sports to just make a move or something. So 
Um, I spoke with Mr. Ski, uh, he's an EMT instructor and he'll be speaking to seniors soon about taking the course. And that is the end of my report. The claims report. <clears throat> fall play this year's fall play was the Wizard of Oz. The play was performed last Friday, su Saturday, Sunday, and Friday was for elementary kids. Saturday and Sunday was for the general public. There was a sportsmanship conference, several students from our high school were selected to participate in the Sportsman Conference and DGF. Students were selected from schools across the Harbor Lakes Conference at the meeting. Uh, students were taught how to be more respectful in student sections during sporting events. Uh, fall sports conceding, all fall sports were officially done November 2nd, and winter sports beginning. Have you had the fun staff? Yeah. What are you most enjoying about your senior year? Um, becoming an adult. Yeah. Just moving on, so. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Any questions? Okay, thank you. And then Mr. Martinez with our finance report. Uh, finance report for the month end of October 31st. Uh, very busy month uh, for the business office. Uh, we started our investment account with $5.8 million in there. Uh, we received $576,000 in state aid. Uh, from our investment account, I pulled uh, in the month of October just a little over a million dollars to make sure that we made all of our obligations for the month of October. Ending our, ending our uh, investment account with 5.3 million. Uh, in our checking account, as you can see, lots of activity. We started the month with, uh, in theory, $55,000 uh, cash on hand. Uh, we had total deposits of 2.5 million, one from our investment account that came into our checking account. Um, the other piece is the first half of our fiscal year 25 levy uh, was paid on October 31st. Um, so you can see a lot of our uh, levy dollars distributed through uh, the different fund balances there. Um, total accounts payable for the month of October were $744,000. Uh, total payroll for the month of October was just a little over $430,000. Uh, leaving cash on hand uh, with uh, $1.4 million. Um, total cash on hand for the month of uh, October was six point uh, six point seven million dollars. Um, going into uh, November um, is what we call our dry month, um, and the reason for uh, the dry month is the state knows that all the counties in the state pay the first portion of their levy in October. So all month of November, we do not receive any state aid. Um, you'll see that in the month of November. So uh, that is why you see a significant cash balance in our checking account. Um, that is going to cover the majority of, uh, of our November. Um, and it's good for us that we keep uh, the other cash on hand in our investment account, that way we, we can maximize dividends and uh, returns in that particular portfolio. Uh, any questions on cash fluctuations in our uh, treasury report before we move on to payables? Okay, then the last pages, like always, is all the payables that go through our um, uh, through our general ledger in, uh, in a given month. So if you guys have any questions regarding any of uh, the payables, always reach out to me. We have uh, um, uh, uh, supporting documentation for everything. Negative balances practically are um, voided payments. So that's why you see that negative balance. So uh, that's all I have for you guys. Questions? All right. Thank you. Thank you. And 
Okay, hey, a few items. Um, one with enrollment, you've heard enrollment from the elementary and the high school. Um, from October 1st to November 1st, we're down five students. In October, we were at 809, and November, we're at 804. Uh, job openings here in the district, um, we're just looking for substitutes right now. Um, as of now, tomorrow can change, next week can change, but right now we're looking for certified and non-certified substitutes. So if you know anyone, please have them contact district office. You can have them contact me, or you can have them contact uh, building principals. But once Mrs. Evanson returns, then we can have them uh, contact Mrs. Evanson. MSBA conference, just a reminder, the conference is January 16th and 17th. If you can let me know by December 1st, if you are attending MSBA, so that we can reserve uh, hotel rooms and um, get you signed up. Special Ed Co-op update. <coughs> a couple things with our co-op. Um, they are settling in in the new building, which is great. We had a tour the other day after our meeting. Um, next couple weeks, they're hoping to finish the audit. The audit's going to be done by December. Um, and then we talked about this before in a couple of meetings. I made a report of our special co-op that Fergus Falls is no longer part of our co-op. So they are working with the co-op and they would like to see disbursements of funds and supplies. So right now we have a committee. I'm part of that committee. We're working with their representatives of the Fergus Falls district and we're working with them of what that will look like. But we're waiting for the audit to be completed. Um, Last item, um, Shannon Erickson is our director, and this is a one year. She's filling in for one year. So we are going to be opening up that position here in December or January. So if anyone um, knows of anyone that would be interested in the special ed co-op director position, to have them contact Shannon Erickson or Wendy at the co-op. So very busy um, year with the co-op with um, the changes, but overall it's been going very well. I will say kudos to Shannon Erickson. The director has done a great job with the transition and handling everything. So thank you to her. District Wellness Committee update. We had a meeting here last week. A few things we talked about at the District Wellness was the bike fleet and the uh, check, uh, checklist and the usage of them. We talked about funding requests. We're taking funding requests. Um, there is some money available from the West Central Initiative. Karen um, has some money that we are available for us. So the wellness team is developing a plan to see what we'll use the funds for. We began developing an action plan for the year, setting goals, what we want to do, what we want to address with the wellness team. And then we set a meeting for um, February, I believe, February or March. So good meeting. Um, having staff district <coughs> Um, it was good, and it was nice to have Karen involved in our meeting. Finance committee um, update, just a few things here that we talked about at our finance committee. Um, one was our district enrollment, um, drives funding, right? So um, we looked at our enrollment, we discussed an enrollment analysis at the meeting to really understand, looking at projections, where are we going with our enrollment. Uh, we talked about the audit coming up and where we're at with the audit and the process. We reviewed the fund balance policy of 22 to 25%, staying above that. Um, we talked about MOUs. Um, we talked about the long range plan. With the long range plan, we talked about just looking at the cost of enrollment analysis and then looking at um, needs assessment, looking at the costs there. And then we discussed budget items for this year. And really what we looked at um, and discussed was a possible budget revision um, in December, January, um, we're waiting to see here where we're at. Carefully watching enrollment monthly, and we talked about being frugal with our spending, um, setting up meetings with our admin team, supervisors, talking about their areas, how we can be uh, frugal. Um, planning for negotiations um, has started. Uh, negotiations with certified staff will start um, next summer. So we're starting to think of that. We have negotiations with Christensen Bus Company in the spring. So we're planning for that because that will make an impact. Um, next item is planning for health insurance increase. Um, that would be part of when we negotiate with the certified staff if that's something that we have to 
keep in mind. So, and then we talked about just you know how we need to this year start planning for programming and staffing and really looking at um, what are we going to continue to offer and what can we continue to do here. So, just kind of some some topics and discussions at the finance committee. Anything else, finance committee members? Anything I missed or you want to add? Okay, next item I want to talk about is the long range plan. Let me switch to that document. Okay, so we've talked about a long range plan here and looking at what we want to do long term. And one of the items we've been talking about is doing a needs assessment. So last summer and to early fall, I met with four organizations or individuals that could help us with a needs assessment. And these organizations or individuals were people that were recommended to me to um, look into and have discussions. So during one of those meetings, one of the organizations encouraged us to do an enrollment analysis. And they said to do an enrollment analysis is really to study where's your enrollment going to be because that's going to drive funding, which is going to impact a lot of things that are going to be part of your needs assessment. So they encourage us to do that. Um, I, again, a needs assessment can cover a lot of different areas, but talking to a lot of the organizations, they really said a needs assessment, the board drives kind of what you want to look at in research with that needs assessment. So there's, um, everyone had a, I would say, uh, one, couple groups were very, um, out of the four groups, three of them were very, we're gonna work with the board to see what they want. One group is, here's the whole package that we're going to, that we offer for a needs assessment. So, um, recommendation here to the board is to complete an enrollment analysis from December to about February. We're thinking February, but before March, hopefully be done with that have a work session to review the enrollment analysis, and then at that work session, then discuss needs assessment planning, which would then be looking at who do we want to interview, um, bring in, and see what they could offer us in the needs assessment. So that would be this year for 24, 25, and then after that, then we would get started. Now. Again, the long-range plan here is a working document, so a lot of these things can change. Um, will, of course, be added um, each year. Questions? Concerns? I, I know last spring we talked about, like, over the summer, bringing in some more of them, and it looks like you talked to four organizations but bringing those organizations into the board so that the board can have some insight on, and I mean, I appreciate the like, move forward with an enrollment analysis and things, but I'm just wondering what happened with the, let's bring these folks in front of the board and go from there. So, the... Yeah, I don't, but like, <coughs> a year later, like we talked about it last spring, so... so Talking with the group, they said they should do a moment analysis because you get the needs assessment once you get started. They're saying is you should really have a good feel where you're at enrollment wise. That was their recommendation. And they said their organization says you should do an enrollment analysis every three to five years was their recommendation. If the board would like to change anything, open to it, um, looking for input, what the board would like to do. Who Two different organizations that we talked to. Um, that <coughs> one was a little bit more expensive. It's really what we're looking at is really a projection, looking at our kids in our district, a study, um, how many go to our school district, how many open enroll, how many are online. Um, it's kind of that look, and then it places them like in a map where they're at because then when the, the information comes to the board you can kind of look at it you can see where we're probably going to be at three to five years plus our current students of zero to 18 in our district so you can have a discussion on all students that live in our district 
So I guess maybe that's my question, is like if we were to have looked at these four organizations, because the enrollment analysis would be a part of the needs assessment. Um, so whoever does that, like would that be who we would be moving forward with, with a, um, the needs assessment, or can we take a look at like the whole package ahead of time and, and then know that the enrollment analysis would be a part of the needs assessment? So most of the organizations did men None of them actually mentioned that I talked to, that I recall, talking about enrollment analysis. The one person that we talked about that represented the organization was separate. It was a different company that they had to do it. So. It's not separate from the needs assessment. Yeah. <clears throat> I think what we want to do, I think, talking with Mr. Martinez, I think we can do a lot of it right here, um, gathering the information that they're going to need. So we're going to try to do as much as we can working with the committee, the finance committee, the reason is what can we do here so then we're not paying that cost is what we're looking at. I guess, and I'll just put my two cents in, like as a, as a board member, I, I guess I need more information on like what's included in a needs assessment, who are we, who are we looking at, like so who are the four organizations, what are they including in the needs assessment, and so that we can make a really informed decision, like does it make sense to go internally or is it is it wiser for the district to invest in like having an outside perspective? So an enrollment analysis and needs assessment would be two different. It would be the same. I think they could be of the same though. Excuse me, are you in under fall and spring of the top? Well, I'm actually kind of going back to last okay. spring's discussion of like, but I think you know, that the, it was probably forward. held off due to the fact that at that time we're ending out a school year, and so as far as our student population, our enrollment, I don't know that it was a good time to um, do like a, a enrollment of what we have at that time. So like this is like going to be halfway through our school year if we look at December through February maybe. But is your question like the school board right there the bottom one school board interviews two to three organizations to help with needs assessment so we will gather as a school board and we'll look at these companies that are going to be doing the needs assessment and we'll make that decision is that what you're asking no oh. no it, no it's like the whole package deal with the the enrollment assessment and the needs assessment and what would that look like from different organizations that's more my question. Yeah, I guess that, that's just where I'm coming from. My perspective is just like getting deeper information, further information of, you know, even for the four organizations and what are they proposing and what's the first <coughs> take on, on the proposals and all of that. Just so we can be well informed. That, that's that's where I'm coming from. Yeah, I, I think if I if I might just comment, um, just to kind of help clarify, all of our professional conversations with institutions or any other districts that have had similar projects, all have recommended to do an enrollment analysis before you even engage in the needs assessment. So step one is enrollment analysis. Out of the organizations that we've had conversations with to offer an enrollment analysis. So what we could do is provide you with the name of those two organizations, some of the information that they are willing to do, and what is the price behind it. Once we have that, once we study the fluctuations in our student, in our student enrollment, and uh, they provide us all the granular lever information that we need, then I think the board can then say, okay, let's focus on phase two of this, which will then be the needs assessment. Tying the two together, um, to me, would be highly inefficient, very inefficient in committing resources for the sense that what's the purpose for us to do a, a needs assessment of our district when our enrollment would potentially go down and then we have to freeze any of the particular, any of the particular uh, uh, motives for us to do any change factors with the needs assessment, right? 
actual needs assessment tells you that a lot of the times you want to need to change something. So, for example, this is me speculating. If we do a needs assessment and then community comes back and says, we would like a swimming pool. In, in, we, we would like a swimming pool and a swimming team in the school. And then your enrollment doesn't support that. Is that really what we want to invest in? Again, hypothetical, but we want to know exactly where our numbers are at, what our projection is going to be in a three and a five and a ten year plan before we engage our community and not provide any false, no false hope on what those change factors are going to be with the need assessment. Next item is cost. You know, but what can we do here um, to decrease the cost? I mean, money is going to be over the next year. Money is going to be a big talk with negotiations. Um, and if the moment's going down, we got to be watching, be very frugal. So I think that so that's what we're trying to do here. That was going to be my next question and discussion is just maybe because there's a lot of items on the finance committee side of things and I know like we have the finance committee we have the policy committee policy committee everything comes back to the board in in like we have to approve each of the items from the policy committee and then just like just getting a high level overview <coughs> of the finance like I, I I just don't feel like I have enough information so how like is there a way that we could give a deeper level of communication from what what's talked about the finance committee um, back to the rest of the board. Because there's just, there was a lot of a lot of really important items in there. Yeah, a lot discussed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any more discussion questions?
item B is resolution canvassing returns of votes of school district general election. I am, I'll look for a motion, I'll read it. This is a resolution canvassing returns of votes of school district general election, be it resolved by the school board of independent school district 548 as follows. Number one, it's hereby found, determined, and declared that the general election of the voters of the district held on November 5th, 2024, was in all respects duly and legally called and held. Two, as specified in the attached abstract and return of votes cast, a total of 8,409 voters of the district voted at said election on the election of three school board members for four year term vacancies on the board caused by expiration of term on the first Monday in January next following the general election as follows. Uh, John Carter, 2,728. Uh, Molly Welch, 2,690. Andrew Swarm, 2,947. And Rydens, 44. Uh, John Carter, Molly Welch, and Andrew Swarm have received, having received the highest number of votes are elected to four year terms beginning the first Monday in January, 2025. And the school district clerk is hereby authorized to certify the results of the election to the county auditor of each county in which the school district is located in full or in part. And can I make a motion to approve the resolution and the of both the school district and the election? I'll make a motion to approve the resolution canvassing returns of votes of school district general election. And, um, I'll second that. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, um, this is a resolution, so we'll do a roll call for that as well. Molly, how do you resolve? Yes. Brenda? Yes. John? Yes. I'm a yes. And motion carries, or the resolution carries. And then next up, we have. Certification. Plan. Yeah, we don't have two of our people have left. So we do have a signature. Uh, it's a canvas certification form for all board members that are present to sign, and it just certifies the election results. And I pass this up to you guys. authorizing issuance, issuance of certificates of election. Uh, so I will read that. Uh, this is a resolution authorizing issuance of certificates of election and directing school district clerk to perform other election related duties. Whereas the board has canvassed the general election for school board members on November 5th, 2024. Now therefore be it resolved by the school board of independent school district number 548 state of Minnesota as follows. The chair and clerk are hereby authorized to execute certificates of election on behalf of the school board of independent school district number 548 to the following candidates. Andrew Swarm, John Carter, Molly Welch, who have received a su sufficiently large number of votes to be elected to fill vacancies on the board caused by expiration of term on the first Monday in January, next following the election, based on the results of the canvas. The certi certificate of election shall be in substantially the form attached hereto after the time for contesting the election has passed and the candidate has filed all campaign financial reports required by Minnesota Statutes Chapter 211A. The clerk of the school board is hereby directed to deliver the certificates to the persons entitled thereto personally or by certified mail. The clerk is hereby directed to enclose with the certificate a form of acceptance of office and oath of office in substantially the form attached here to. 
and civils ones are attached. Can I get a motion to approve the resolution authorizing issuance of certificates of election? I'll make a motion to approve the resolution authorizing issuance of certificates of election. Is there a second? Motion and a second. And this is a resolution, so we will do a roll call vote. Is there any discussion before we do that? Any discussion? Any discussion? All right. Um, I'll have you resolve. Yes. Brenda? Yes. John? Yes. And I'm yes. And the resolution first. Then there's upcoming meetings on December 16th. We have a regular meeting at 6 p.m. January 6th is a regular meeting at 6 p.m. That will be the reorganization meeting. And then January 16th and 17th is the MSBA Leadership Conference. I'll let Mr. Fork know by December 1st if you're going. And then the last item up is to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. <laughs> is there a second? I'll second. I'll second. Brenda B. to John. All right. Okay. Is there any discussion? I don't think there is discussion. Molly, are you? Well, for Aye. Brenda? Aye. John? Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm an aye. Sounds unanimous. Let's adjourn. Thank you. Okay.